all right what's going on everybody josh pocock here and in today's video we are going to be looking at a free perplexity alternative called open perplex your portal to knowledge let's dive right into it all right guys so in today's video we're going to be showing you how to self-host open perplex as well as you can use their free version on their actual website right here so you can go to openperplex.com i'll leave a link down below you can actually test this out say how how many letters are in the alphabet you can toggle on their pro feature and as you can see we're doing the search right now we can see the sources right here and it's breaking down how many letters are in the alphabet and basically five vowels 21 consonants and 26 in total so and then it gives a full list historical context conclusion relative questions so we can go expand upon this you know ask it follow-up questions there's the pro and it even um in certain cases will have images uh potentially videos here on the right hand side so pretty similar looking to um perplexity right and if you've been following this channel or if you're just in the kind of ai open source space you may have seen for example me cover multiple other perplexity alternatives we covered perplexica we covered l local search we covered morphic um, we've covered about four different ones up until now. So this will be about the fifth and I'll leave those linked down below too. Cause if you're looking for a perplexity alternative, that's open source, you may want to check out those other videos so you can kind of get a sense of what would be best for your specific use case. And yeah, I would recommend even maybe testing multiple different ones out and seeing what you like best. Right? So anyways, um, that's how you use it for free on their, uh, cloud website right here. Um, you can also, uh, when you open or when you, uh, self host it, you're technically using it for free, but you're leveraging API, uh, the different API services. So if once you run out of those API credits, um, you're going to be paying for API credits, right? So thing with open perplex is here are, are the two, so there's actually two GitHubs for it. So there's the back end app side of things and the front end. So this is the front and then this is the back. Okay. I'm going to show you how to set them both up. Um, so you can have a full working system and first things first is we'll set the back end side of things up. So I'll walk you through how I did it. Um, I'm sure there's a couple other alternative ways to do it, but, um, so we can start by git cloning this repo. So you're going to want to copy the link of the repo in the description. You're going to open up your command terminal and I actually already ran this. I'm actually hosting it right now. Um, so I'm not going to fully Git clone it, but you would just CD into whatever directory you want to clone the repository in, and then you would go git clone and then copy the uh, or paste in the back end link right here. Okay, once you do that, so for example, if I go cd desktop cd development and then um, cd repos and ls, oops, ls um, open perplex, so cd open perplex perplex underscore back end underscore os then once you're in here you go like this you'll see we have um you will just have a dot env dot example once you get clone you're going to want to copy and uh, duplicate that environment variable example and then rename it to dot env just dot env so you could just either do that in the command line or you could just literally copy paste and then open this up in VS Code or Notepad, whatever the case may be. And you're going to have to input the following environment variables. So this is the thing, what I'll say with, uh, with Open Perplex uh, compared to some of the other alternative open source tools, Perplexica, Morphic, certain ones like this. Not all of them. Some of them do like require you to have API keys for certain things. Some of them don't uh, require for, a, you know, most that don't require this many API keys right this one uh requires four i don't know if every single one is mandatory but at least for me i put them all in i haven't tested it with out, like with three of them or what two of them so you're gonna need a cohere gina serper and grok so the good thing is though um you can get started with all these for free so you can literally just sign up and so for example if i go to down here it will be the link to all of them so cohere is for semantic chunking Gina is for re-ranking, Serper is for Google search integration, and then Grok is for inference engine. 
and go to Gina, Serper Dev, and Grok. And we can see right here, Gina is... Um, all right, so you can go to Gina right here, and if you just click on API, it's going to scroll down. I'm not going to scroll down just because it shows my API key, but then you can just copy that API key. You don't even have to make an account for Gina to get the API key, so that's pretty cool. Serper, you get 2,500 free queries, um, so you can make an account. There's no credit card required to get that. And then Grok, it's free, but there's rate limits if you are using uh, it extensively. And um, Cohere, you can sign up. And I, be, I I don't know exactly the, I forget what the exact specifics around the um, free API key or whatever is, but I'm not, I didn't put my credit card on there. So you're good to go. Um, you can use it um, and test this out, open uh, locally hosted for free essentially. And then if you want it fully free um, without ever having to, you know, after the API keys expire, you can use their cloud source version. Now, once you do that, you change the e env uh, environment variable. You're going to want to, yeah, you put the API keys in there. You're going to want to run um, uh, pip install requirements or pip install dash r requirements. Now, if you are on a Windows, I will say this. So let me just pull up my terminal. So if you're on a Windows, um, what I did, because one of the requirements isn't available on Windows, so if I go into, I opened up requirements and I scrolled all the way down. There's one requirement that is called UV uh, loop. It looks like this. So if I go here, this is what it's going to look like. UV loop dash, dash 0 0.190. And I deleted that. Um, so far, it's been good. It hasn't broken the app or anything like that. I'm going to show you it's functioning and everything in just a second. And then once you do that, then you can pip, uh, then you can run that command. You can run that either right on your system, or if you run into any issues, you could set up an environment, a virtual environment, um, which I did just because, you know, whatever. Uh, and and either way works though. If you're running into any issues, set up a virtual environment. If you don't know how to do that, just ask ChatGPT. It's very simple. You're good to go. Then you're gonna have um, the back end running. You're going to want to once you uh, install the requirements, you're going to want to run UV corn. Uh, main colon app dash port 8000 that's going to start the back end service on port 8000 it's going to be accessible at localhost uh, 8000 and once you load it up it's just going to look like this hello world perplexic or open perplex v1 okay so that's the back end side of things then you're going to want to go to the front end side of things which is right here and it's very similar you're going to get clone this repo link right here i just did it right into the same area where i cloned the other back the front the back the back inside of things and this is a view view, G, uh, view G, js <laughs> and um yeah so it's actually a lot it's kind of easier to do you're just going to get clone and cd into open per, uh, perplex and then install dependencies so npm install and then you're going to um configure so you actually don't need to do this because if you're just running it locally it's going to and you did it and the way i just showed you it's going to be on port 8000 of your local host if you change it or if you're like you're hosting it on an actual domain on a server then you're gonna want to do this step to change um the server url for the back end but uh, since you're doing it locally most likely then you're good to go you're able to then just simply npm run dev and that's going to build the app which uh, is going to look like this. So here we have Open Perplex. It's going to start on port 5,173. We can go ahead and ask it a question. All right, explain some advanced concepts on quantum physics. And I do really like a few things to point out. You know, if you watch or if you're going to watch some of the other videos, I do like the UI here. And I do like, as we just saw um, for a brief second here, if you didn't see, you can rewind and see. But it was actually when I did the search, there was like a box here and it, you could kind of see all um, the different queries or steps it was going through. So I do like that. I do like the UI. One thing is I wish they had dark mode because I'm a dark mode type of guy. And here we have the sources. I like that uh, that here. I like the the fonts. Um, you know, it's the small things. You know, when it comes to the UI. I mean, it's a simple app, but uh, for me, it's really this those little things. Um, related questions. I like how they have that. I like how they have the pro feature. I always like when these search apps have the pro feature. Now you may be wondering, hey, well, what, Josh? What is your favorite um, like perplexity open source alternative? Well, I do like all of them for different use cases. Do I say this one is my favorite? Um, probably, to be quite honest, probably not. 
Um, I've tried multiple different ones. Um, I did a video where I broke down three of them. Um, you can check that one out. Link in the description down below. Um, I do like Morphic. I think Morphic, I haven't checked it recently, but someone said something about them adding some sort of paid thing. I don't know about that. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, do like Perplexica. Um, you know, the UI with both of those are pretty good. There's some other ones too I, I mentioned that I covered. Um, so I would just say check different ones out for me. It's like kind of a personal preference and also just maybe seeing what you get the best results with. Some of them are built using different stacks, using different, you know, APIs or different models. So that's what I would suggest. Um, also too, I mean, comparative to perplexity, just to be transparent, I'm still paying for perplexity. I, I'm guess, you know, I, I still like perplexity. I still get value from perplexity, but I still get value from these open source ones too. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I like both. I like having the different options, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below, guys. What's your favorite open source perplexity alternative? Or do you just not like any of these? Do you just like perplexity? And other than that, guys, if you are new to the channel, you got some value out of this, um, I'd appreciate it. Dropping a like, dropping a sub. Um, we upload videos every single day on AI, automation, business growth, open source tools, coding, AI coding, whatever the case may be. Check out some of the other videos. So, um, you can stay up to date with the daily uploads. And then other than, that, other than that, guys, if you haven't already joined our free community, stridecommunity.com, link for that will be in the description down below. Our free Facebook group, free Discord channel, where you can network with like-minded entre entrepreneurs, AI enthusiasts, coders, developers, all that good stuff, as well as myself. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.